If you bought a new Apple computer, like the new MacBook Pro 13 M2, MacBook Air, or even the Mac Mini M1, and maybe new to Mac coming from Windows, or maybe it's been a while since you set up a new Mac system, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the setup of the new MacBook Pro 13 M2 running Mac OS Monterey. This video is to help you step-by-step step or what to expect when you turn on your new machine. This will be very similar to all new MacBooks and Apple's lineup today and a few differences when setting up a Mac Mini or iMac. This is a longer video, so check out the timestamps if you want to rewatch certain sections. Without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So as you open your new computer, you are going to be presented with different languages of hello, bonjour, and from here we can move forward, you choose your language, and you continue through the setup. And here there are also special accessibility features that you can use and adapt as you set up your computer. For me and for this demonstration, I'm just going to choose not now. You're going to set up your, your Wi-Fi. And you want to set up your Wi-Fi to do the rest of the activation. That's one key thing is that you do need to be connected onto Wi-Fi. I'm going to go through data and privacy. And you can migrate if you do have another Mac computer or an older MacBook. You can migrate your information to make it easier from Time Machine Backup. And I am going to not migrate, so I'm going to choose Not Now. From here, you can sign in with your Apple ID. So if you don't have an Apple ID, if you are new to Apple or new to the Apple operating system, you can create a new Apple ID here. For me, I do have an Apple ID, so I'll set that up now. And if you do have an Apple operating system, you are going to get a authorization number or what they is is a message for a verification code. So once you're verified, you're going to create a computer account, a login. I always urge anyone on any new computer to add some sort of password to protect you so no one goes in, especially as the administrator, to make any changes on your computer. And as you can see here, this is clicked, allow my Apple ID to reset this password. So for whatever reason, if you have multiple Apple devices like myself, I have an iPad, a Mac Mini, a MacBook Pro, an older MacBook Pro, I can reset the password using my Apple ID in case I made a different password for each one of these devices. So it's going to take some time. It's going to process and create your account and set up the Mac operating system for you right now. The next step is setting up iCloud. So it's setting up the account. So it's tied. You have a backup. Here is the find my location, which is kind of great. I like to activate this on all my devices, especially when it's mobile, like my iPad, my iPhone, and especially my MacBook or my MacBook Pro. This will help you if you forgot it. <laughs> if you forgot it somewhere, you'll be able to find it through your iCloud account. So there's a few options here that you can turn on or turn off. Location services for maps, etc., is on by default. Device uh, device analytics off if that is set on for whatever reason, depending on the version that you get with your new computer. I like to keep this off and off as well. And depending on how much you're going to use Siri, I also keep this off. You can turn it on. Screen time, I don't mind. That's fine by default. All these changes you can make within system preferences if you made a mistake or you want to change these later. File default disencryption is on, so it encrypts your information. And appearance is dark mode. You can actually, let's see if we can change this. Let's see if we can change this. So to change any of these settings, you can go to the customize settings option right here on the left-hand side. From here, enable locations. I'm just going to continue. Analytics, just turn off. Screen time is OK. And I'm not going to enable Siri for this setup. I will turn that on, which is great, no problem. And it even has this mark here, allow my iCloud account to unlock my disk. So which really great about any Apple operating system or computer is that your iCloud account can unlock or be your master password for almost everything. Touch ID. So no matter what, how you're setting up your computer, 
the first things that I would I would urge you to do is use Touch ID if you have that feature enabled on your computer. So for this, I'm going to set up now, and you just go through the setup process and follow the instructions. So now Touch ID is ready. You're good to go. If you have Apple Pay set up on your other devices, you can set it up here. But just for this demonstration, I'm just going to put set up later. And then you can change your look. You can have light mode, dark mode, or auto. And it gives you an example of what that looks like. So light mode, a little bit brighter. Dark mode, everything's darker, obviously. Or you can have it automatic. So during the day, it's in light mode. And at night, it's in dark mode. For this demonstration, I'm going to put it on auto. All right, so now you are all set up. Your computer is now going to look similar to this screen. It says your calendar would like to use your current location. I'm just going to put don't allow. Obviously, it's set up to my iCloud account. So I am just going to close all those notifications for now. So you're going to notice that you, you have your doc here on the bottom. You have your screen. You have your title bar up top. Shows the date, the time. You have your Wi-Fi icon. You have also notifications here. So I have my Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirDrop. All these things are now set up. And you can even have your focus mode. Do not disturb. You can have personal, work, or sleep preferences. But we are going to go through a setup that I like to go through to make it really nice and easy, especially when it comes to screen real estate, especially when it comes to things that are customized to you and how you like to use things. So there's a few things that I would recommend right away. So when we set up the MacBook Pro, we, we set it up with Touch ID for security. So the first thing that I like to do with any MacBook or MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, is to go back to Touch ID and add as many fingerprints as possible. And the reason for that is that you want to be able to secure your computer. What happens is if anyone, if you lend your computer or your MacBook Pro to anyone and you don't set this up, they can actually go in here into your settings and create their own touch ID and open and enter your account at any time. So I would strongly recommend to be one of the first things that you do is to create a touch ID for as many fingers are available. You can actually even use the same finger. So here I'm just going to use the same one. And then I'm going to add one more finger. And now I have fully set up all the fingers and no one can create a new one and change it. So you're good to go. The next thing that I like to do for my preference is actually going to trackpad. So for me, I like to change the scroll. Right now it says scroll direction natural. I like it the opposite. That is a preference for me. So what do I mean by that? If I go to a website for my scrolling, this is the way that I like to use it. The other thing that I like to do when you set up a computer, especially the MacBook Pro, is the dock. So because the screen real estate of whatever MacBook Pro or MacBook that you get, you're going to have either a 15-inch screen, 14-inch screen, 16-inch screen, and real estate is very sparse. So what I like to do is go to the dock and make some changes. From here, you're going to notice you can actually change the position to the left where you can see that all the icons are smaller. You can have it at the bottom or you can have it on the right. For me, I don't mind it being on the bottom, but what I do want it to do is actually disappear. So what you do is going into this option right here, automatically hide and show the dock. So as you can see, the dock will show up when I scroll down and put my arrow there. When I put a website where I have multiple applications open, I won't have to worry about that dock being in the way. Now, there are obviously different options here. You can make the dock as small or as large as, poss uh, as, large as you like. I don't mind having it just a little bit smaller, just enough for me to see what's available. So other than the dock and the Touch ID, the other thing that I like to set up is the emoji. So I obviously have already an emoji set up or a 
Memoji. <laughs> you can change it to emoji if you like. Monogram. You can create a... Uh, you can use some old photos. From here, you can create something new right from scratch and really customize it. Because I've already created one from a older or from one of my other devices, I have a Memoji already set up. You can change how large it is, but that will show up in your logins when you log into your computer. So I'm set up there, but you can change that 100%. What's great about a portable device is having battery life. If you want to have the best battery life, I like to go into battery and just to change some options to make sure that everything is good to go. Here you can show it shows the, the last 24 hours, the levels, the last 10 days. So under battery, I like to click everything off here, optimize video streaming while on battery, show battery status in the menu bar. Low power mode is the only thing that I don't click off because I still want to get as much power as possible when I'm doing and working on the battery. To turn off display, you can obviously change this. For myself, if I'm going mobile, it's not going to be plugged in. I'm usually good about 5 minutes to 10 to 15 minutes. I don't necessarily want to keep my display on when I'm not touching it or using it for over an hour. Obviously, for obvious reasons, it's going to kill the battery the longer the display is on. You can also see this option here, which is battery life, just to check what your battery life and the battery condition is based on the, based on the software. So this is brand new. So I'm glad to see that it says it's normal and the maximum capacity is 100%. Now, the other thing that you'd like to do is just go to a power adapter and then you can make some changes here. And I just keep this as default. I don't really make any changes here. One thing that I do want to ensure is if this is clicked off for whatever reason, is just show battery status in menu bar. So when we close this off, this is our battery and it shows 100%. All right, so now that your battery is all set up, a few things that you may want to customize is looking at the software or your icons that are in the dock and what you would normally use. So for me, I'm not worried about Launchpad. All you need to do is just click on the icon and then slide up and it will remove it. I will not really use Maps that often as well. I like to keep my dock with my mostly used applications. So Photos. Mail, Safari, Messages, Contacts, I probably won't use a lot. Reminders, yeah, I'll keep that there for now. Notes is okay. Music's okay. Podcast, news, Keynote, I won't use that that much. Numbers, won't put that there as well. And then Pages. So once that is all set up, you have your battery, you have your Wi-Fi set up. You have your dock set up with all the icons that you're going to be using the most is for to check for software updates. So here you go to system preferences and right here you can see is software update. So you can click on that. It's going to go on the internet and right away it shows that I do have an update available. So this is set up for Mac OS Monterey 12.5.1. So I'm going to update that now. This is obviously going to take a moment, so I will fast forward this. Okay, so once you have gone through your software update, you are going to come into your login page. Because it has rebooted, it may reboot several times, you do need to enter your password for Touch IT to work. So once you're logged in, it will show you here, store files from documents. You can choose this for my option and just for this demo. I'm just going to unclick that for now. I'm going to continue. And now my software is up to date as of the time of this recording. So that is a quick setup guide. It shows you how to set up a brand new MacBook or a iMac or a Mac Mini. Things will change, but this was done on a MacBook Pro 13 M2. Now, if you do want to see the applications that I install for all my Apple computers, either it be a Mac Mini, iMac, or MacBook Pro, let me know in the comments below. Found value in this video, you know what to do. If you want to watch more tech videos, click here. And to watch one of my latest videos, click here. Be safe, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.